Oh, crud. That is no good. What are you guys yelling about? This was your fault. I don't know if you guys realize what's going on here. Hey, Belinda. How's it going, sweetie? Abby, you've got a lot to say. So it looks like my cattle have pushed their cattle fence all the way to here to the point where I can't even get through. I think what happened is they've been so eager to get out all the green grass that has started to grow that they're pushing out the fence. Like you can even see it here. Ordinarily, the fence would be up against their water trough, but they've pushed it so hard in such a way that they've expanded it out a good, I don't know, two to three feet because they wanted to get more grass. And I've seen them try to like reach underneath the fence to munch on the grass, but they took it to the extreme. And unfortunately, when I was setting up this cattle yard, I didn't put enough pins or like posts sticking up from the ground to keep this in place. So now we're gonna have to fix it because later this morning, I gotta get my tractor through here to get them more hay to feed both the ladies and the gentlemen. I don't know, Ginny. It just feels like one of those days on the farm. It's been exceptionally rainy. Like we've had straight rain for the last 30, six hours and I'm just luckily catching a break here this morning and it's even like misting a little bit like lightly as we speak right now and it's supposed to pour probably by about 11 so I got kind of a short amount of time to get this done but I'm going to have to fix this I just want to see if I can do it by hand yes Audrey I would say this is your, as boss cow, I would say this is your fault which actually isn't fair at all because as farmer, it's my fault. That proverbial buck needs to stop it. But yes, they are definitely eager to get at that green grass. And that green grass has been growing. And now some of you are probably seeing this and saying, hey, it's about time you turn out your cattle. But it's actually too soon because the grass hasn't had enough chance to grow yet. And I'd worry that they'd damage my pasture if I set them out there just yet. I need to give them a few more weeks here still. Which means this might not be the last time I have to fight this battle. Excuse me, Eric. Now, when I was setting up this cattle yard, I put in a lot of posts like this to help stabilize things like gates. But I let this whole long expanse going down that way go without enough pins. And so that's why this problem happened. And I've now learned a valuable lesson that I won't repeat in the future. Because while this was not a problem most of the winter, the allure of fresh grass can sometimes be too much for cattle. There's nothing like having to drop a T-post at a moment's notice in the rain. And speaking of the rain, it's actually now starting to fall. And so I switched from the good camera to the GoPro here. And I also switched from my toque to this baseball cap because I find baseball caps are the much better hat for the rain. But of course that doesn't do anything to change the weather right now. It's like 38 degrees Fahrenheit and rainy, which is my least favorite time to do farm chores. Oh, Abby, you are filthy. Toby dog, you're not much better. Oh my golly. I've got some muddy, muddy Maremmas on my hands here. Oh, good girl. How are you doing? I know we didn't hang out much yesterday because just basically come out, do our quick chores and call it a day. You guys didn't even want to leave your dog houses. It's true. I spent most of the day inside yesterday, which for this time of year is actually abnormal. Abby dog spent most of her day inside here. She likes to hang out underneath the canopy and uh, kept her dry. Meanwhile, Mr. Toby dog spent most of his time underneath the dog house. You know, unless it's like really cold, the dogs don't like to be indoors, like inside the dog house. They'd much rather have some sort of open air containment. Isn't that right, sweetie? Aw, you're just a big old snow snuggle puppy even though you're big and soggy and I'm probably gonna have to change when I go back inside because I think today's gonna be mostly an indoor work day or at least I hope it's gonna be an indoor work day because these are not the types of conditions you want to do your farm chores in isn't that right little Jenny you know it's funny I've got this like mile long list of spring projects I want to try to accomplish and I'm just raring to go with fencing work in particular but also doing some water piping work and I gotta get ready to start moving the pigs around but I've come to learn that it's just not worth trying to do it on super rainy days like yesterday or today and so what you guys are gonna see me is doing my bare minimum farm chores in today's video. And that's not to say that I'm gonna try to slack or anything. It's just that I've come to learn that my time is better spent inside. Of course, the one thing I actually did do yesterday while I was pouring rain and I was doing my morning chores was that I was able to drop down a whole bunch of oat seed right in this space here. I should probably scratch it in a little bit to get it a little bit under the soil, but it should be okay just sitting on top like that. You know, pretty soon I'm gonna have to convert the weird chicken house into a brooder for my new goslings. That should hopefully be hatching very, very soon. What are you doing out here, duck? Okay, so this duck, I don't think I've ever really introduced Introduced her on YouTube much. Her name's Greta. She's one of the original Khaki Campbell ducks that I got, gosh, I guess it was five years ago now? It was the uh, spring of 2018. She has somehow figured out how to sneak out of the enclosure for the birds 
And like I find her out here every single morning. Abby has been a very good girl with her and she has not tried to harass her or create any sort of problems. But every morning, Greta and I have this ritual of her coming outside and me having to bring her back in with everybody. Come on guys, let's go treat the birds. Release the Kraken! <laughs> Hey, 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 what's everybody doing here? You know, I tried to let the door open so I could get Greta back inside, and now she's wandering out, and I've got even more birds out. Let's herd them in. I'm gonna use the stick to try to help me herd. Come on, let's go, Greta. Come on. See, I can recognize Greta because she has a crooked neck. I don't know if you guys can notice this on the video. That crooked neck is a byproduct of when she got attacked by the mink, who's actually injured really, really bad back then. She's Recovered nicely. She's now one of the older gals in my flock. I'm happy to have her, even though she's a little bit mischievous. And speaking of mischievous, would you look at this? Hey, everybody inside, let's go. Come on, come on. Bron Swanson, I see you. April Ludgate, I see you. Let's go. Greta, come on. You're leading a rebellion here, and I'm not happy about it. Abby, come. All right, geese in. Greta in. Come on. Everybody in. Everybody in. Everybody in. Come on, Carmen. Carmen, get in, please. Inside. Let's go. Meanwhile, Greta remains on the loose. Come on, Greta. Let's go. This isn't a joke. I want you inside. Thank you, girl. Yeah, the birds are itching to get outside as well because they see all the fresh grass. They're probably getting sick of their bird yard area. And that's actually one of the projects I need to work on very, very soon. And by soon, I mean later this week. This is all very stressful. So let me just give you guys a weird chicken moment of zen. Okay, now I've got your feed. We're gonna do some egg collection. Sorry to have embroiled you guys in that chaos because yes, it is darn chaotic out there. But yeah, I mean, if you look, the current existing bird area, pretty much just a beaten down muddy mess. My plan is that later this spring, I will reseed it. Something that the birds could come out to say in October or November and uh, be ready to scarf when they come in from the pasture. Oh no. Do you look at this? Got eggs out here in the water and the mud. Unfortunately, when they leave eggs like this, I don't feel comfortable with selling them to people. It's because the water and the mud can permeate the egg bloom and so they basically don't become fit for human consumption. And so essentially I will just restrict them to being either dog food or pig food. I mean, I'm not saying you can't eat them, so please be clear. It's just me saying that as a farmer concerned about the food safety of my customers, I err on the side of very conservative when it comes to this stuff. And so I'd much rather make it animal fodder than risk getting somebody sick. You know what I mean, Abby? You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, as I showed you guys in a recent video, I'm trying to keep the ducks and geese in particular out of our pond to give the pond a chance to rest and recover. And I'm gonna be doing some planting stuff and trying to really rehab that area. And so pretty soon, as soon as I expand out my fencing, I'm actually gonna be putting a permanent fence or semi-permanent fence, a couple of them out in the pasture. That's gonna give me the opportunity to move my birds a little bit more frequently. Would you look at that? Got an entire nest of eggs right here. And so probably what I'm gonna do is right before the trees start, cut a long fence that way. And then I'm gonna also cut another long fence this way so that the lower pastures four quadrants. And then over the course of the summer, my plan will be to rotate the birds more frequently. You know, in years past, I would just let them roam the whole area. But the fact of the matter is they spent most of their time in this lower area. And I think this part of the pasture got overgrazed. While meanwhile, the upper areas, while the cattle would go through and graze it, the other birds, except for the chickens who I forced to graze it, didn't really go there. And so I'm gonna be working on methods and means to keep my birds moving this year and not let them stay in one spot for too long. So that means that they're gonna still be free ranging pretty much 24 seven. The difference is gonna be though, sort of what areas and how much space they have to free range because they don't need all 10 acres at once. At most, they maybe need like two or three. And even then that might be more than they need. And so what I'm gonna work on trying to improve this year is keeping them moving, both using fencing, but then also using a couple of other things as well. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys already reached down and ate a couple inches of feed. They're always hungry in the morning, that's for sure. 
Don't stand in the way of the birds and their food. They're hungry critters right now. Of course, they're really hungrier for grass more than anything else. Now, I'm gonna actually set the four cleanest eggs aside. Those are gonna be for the dogs. And the other eggs will just dispose of in a few minutes. With a different animal. I'm sorry, my camera's so dirty. I'm glad I switched to the GoPro here this morning. All right, let's see what we have for usable eggs. We got this one. It's like pickings are slim this morning. I feel like most of my eggs got deposited outside yesterday. Oop. Got a couple nice fresh goose eggs. These will go into the incubator. Excuse me, miss. This is not a double decker bus. Wait, what the heck? Is your head stuck in there? What were you doing in there? What was going on? That was weird. Why are you so weird? If you're not careful, I'm gonna put you with the weird chickens there, girl. Birds are so weird. Alright, got another one. How are you doing, gal? You realize there's nothing underneath you now, right? Like you're just sitting there for the heck of it. There aren't any eggs. She just refuses to give up that nest, and I have no idea how to break her of that. You know, breaking broody chickens and broody ducks is pretty much just about destroying their nest and they'll move on. I have not had the same luck with broody geese. The geese are just so committed to the premise they will quickly rebuild their nest. What you gonna do, huh? Well, this is about half as good as a usual egg haul. But at least I know where the other eggs went, and it's not a shocker. All right, now let's see how our farm's newest residents are dealing with all the rain and the mud. I will admit, I'm a little bit worried about what I'm gonna come out here to find today, but I don't know, maybe it's gonna be okay. Good morning, guys. How's everybody doing? Oh boy, yeah. It's about as muddy as I expected it was gonna be. Let's unhook this so I don't get zapped. Hey guys, I come bearing gifts. I know, I still haven't named you guys. I'm working on it. I'm trying to come up with names. Yeah, I'm still working on names. I'm pretty sure I want to name them after characters on The Sopranos. Woke up this morning, got some gabagoo. Like, what do you guys think about that? I don't know. I mean, pork and pork products play a pretty darn big role in The Sopranos. Gabagoo. Over here. And I think it would be funny if I like, Name this one here, Phil Leotardo. My grandpa came over from Sicily. They changed it at Ellis Island to Leotardo. Even though they're all female. They disrespected a proud Italian heritage and named us after a ballet costume. I think I'd do non-gender conforming Sopranos pig names if I had my choice. What the hell's wrong with you? But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Yeah, you trying to eat my pants and my boots? They're getting more comfortable with me. Like, they'll come up to me and they're not like afraid of me now, but they also don't like to be touched. Like anytime I try to scratch or rub them, they will end up like freaking out. Like, look, if I scratch her, hey, don't bite my boot. You're gonna rip it. Hey, knock it off. Don't do that. Tell Dr. Iaconis I don't appreciate that, okay? It's funny, I was trying to do a demo of how she's gonna freak out and she doesn't, but these two do. Like the red one and the small or pink one. Okay, you guys are hungry, I can tell. They ate down most of their food from yesterday. I can see that they're kind of worked up and they want more food. You know, one thing that people said to me about pigs that I thought was gonna be true, but is it? They said that pigs would poop in like one corner in one part of their pen and they wouldn't make a mess everywhere else. But as I look out through here right now, they are pooping everywhere. I'm gonna keep covering it up with straw so that they're not just like in their own waste. They're still gonna be in here for probably about another week or two before I start to migrate them into the forest. I hear a lot fewer yelps and squeals when they hit the hot fence because I feel like they've learned mostly how to do it. But since I don't have a perimeter fence to keep them in if they escape, I really wanna make sure that they learn this fencing very, very well and respect it in a meaningful way. Isn't that right, Phil? 20 years in the can. I wanted Manicot. I compromised. Okay, you guys, on the menu for today is spent brewer's grains and duck eggs. I think I'm gonna have to make them a better pig trough. I don't like my feeder situation either. So if anybody has any suggestions for good, simple pig trough designs, I'm all ears. And please let me stress that word of simple. I've seen various content creators who put out like these very complex pig trough feeders, which I just don't feel like I'm ready to invest the time or money into building right now. I just want something cheap and simple to feed these guys for the course of the summer. I'm still not sure if pigs are right for our farm. Let's check their water. Huh. Looks like they may be running out of water. Oh, 
Looks like they're gonna need a fill up. I've taken to stashing this hose over here. <laughs> and setting it up just like so. And then I can take the water hose that I use for the birds and connect it to the green hose here. And then all I have to do is flip the switch. And I'm now magically filling up the pig waterer. A few minutes later. Oh crap. That's not good. This thing is leaking again. This pig waterer has caused me nothing but problems. As you can tell by the assortments of spray on rubber, of duct tape, of plumbing tape. Like I've been trying to deal with a leak inside this pig waterer and it still continues. Oh, so frustrating. I'm gonna have to let this drip out and fix it later today. But yeah, that's not good. That's just gonna make a big old mess. I'm glad I got this rubber mat down here at least. I mean, it's not like the end of the world. It's just, it's gonna be something I gotta deal with. I think I'm gonna have to just do a whole different design for how my pig waterer works versus other folks. Whoa, you guys already devoured some of that. Look at that. Mm. Well, I think also spread a fair amount of it on the ground. Look at my little piggies. Yeah, maybe Phil Leotardo. I don't know, Bobby Bacala. Drop some suggestions down in the comments, you guys. You guys listen to that? Yeah, because we've had such raging waters here. The creek that runs through our farm is just flowing like mad. That's pretty cool. Here you can see another one of those stone walls that lines our property. Like it goes right through here. And so essentially when they were first setting up the farm and homestead and they were clearing the field and area here, they brought all the rocks down into here. And that's how we ended up with this rock wall. It also protects and keeps things out of the stream and keeps things from coming in from this side. And so you could maybe think of this rock wall, which is looking more like a mossy, mossy hill over the course of the years, as like the first fence that was ever established here. Then you can see an old cedar fence post right here. It even still has the ceramic insulator on it. At least 70 years old. This has been here for quite some time. I don't know, I could probably actually pull the insulator off and figure out how old it is. I mean, I guess they came with the advent of electric fencing is probably when that fence post came into play. The dogs are a little concerned because they hear rustling in the woods here, even though it's just me. Don't worry, Abby, it's just me. She looks very concerned. Hey, Macho Man, you ready for our daily ritual? Come on, Randy. I actually didn't do this with him yesterday because it was just so rainy. It didn't feel like something I wanted to go out and do. So you can already see how much more hair builds up. Come on, buddy. Come with me. Come on. I'm not gonna lie. Halter training with Macho Man has actually gotten a lot harder in the past few days. It's because I have to contend with the fact that there's all this green grass. And the second I take him out, he just wants to munch down on as much of it as he possibly can. If you guys remember from like last summer when I would move my cattle to fresh pasture, just how crazy they would go and just start devouring all the grass they possibly could. That's kind of what he's doing right now as well. And so it makes it a lot harder to move him around. And it actually means I might have to put an end to our walks outside of the gate. He does not seem happy about this at all. But the reality is with farm life, you always have to be willing to adapt with the seasons. All right, let's feed our hungry, hungry barn cats. Okay, Ginny, you get to eat first because you're the impatient one. Molly, you get to go second. Then Mr. Pablo, here you go, buddy. Enjoy. Oh boy, I've got some good and hungry barn dogs here. He always knows what's a good meal and a bad meal. I think he's gonna think this one's a good one. It's kibble and freeze dried raw soaked in goose stock. And yeah, in case you guys are wondering, I'm still playing role for dog food. I haven't been able to figure out how to make them short enough to fit as YouTube shorts. So if you wanna see them, you gotta to go to that other place. Don't worry, Abby, just because the pigs are getting eggs doesn't mean you guys are getting shortchanged. Both dogs have actually stopped eating their shells, so don't leave them in there anymore. All right, here's a bowl for Lady Abington. Of course I can't forget Mr. Toby Dog. Here you go, pal. You guys might have noticed that I've changed up the feeding order. Well, there is a reason for that. That's probably a whole separate other video and conversation that we should get into in a future video. Would you look at that? Greta has figured out how to get out again. She brought two of her friends with her. So that's Puddles, who's Ron Swanson's sister. And then I'm not sure who that other one is. Hopefully they don't do too much damage in here. I'll have to chase them out later. Yeah, it looks like we got plenty of frog eggs and tadpoles ready to go here. I mean, let's look really closely at this, right? Can you see it? They're becoming bigger. Pretty soon they're gonna swim right out of those frog eggs and this whole pond will be populated with tadpoles. And so we gotta figure out a way to keep these ducks from getting in here and devouring all the tadpoles. I'm sure they've already put a hurt on the number of frog eggs we have in here. But I've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> you know, very, very soon, I won't have to wipe down my wet tractor, which has been exposed to the elements. Because I'll be able to keep it inside there. That door right there is gonna be the new future in and out door for my tractor. And I'm super excited for it. Yeah, you can see pretty much all the flooring is 
done. You know, I've got another farm crime videos coming up and I'm wondering how I'm gonna be able to shoot it outside. I might actually shoot it in here. I don't know. What do you think? It could actually be fun to just go up on the second floor and maybe even the first floor and shoot a whole video in an unfinished barn. Fresh haze are coming. Ice cream, ice cream. Boss Cow's always checking out where the best hay is. I know, fellas, you got fed last, but it wasn't like I was gonna forget about you. Hey, Belinda, looks like you got uh, some fur on your horn. Is that your fur or somebody else's? Could be your mom's. It's shedding season for them. If you're having farm problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems. And the fact that I clipped this fence insulator with the tractor, or actually probably with a hay bale, just a moment ago is one. Let's see if I can get it back in place. There we go, that should do. Back on. Come on, Greta, let's go. You other ducks too, come on. Puddles. Let's go. We're going inside. Come on. You're not allowed to be in the pond. Come on. Let's go. Come on. 